Hello and welcome. This is Democracy in Practice on Liberty TV and Liberty Radio. I am Mahmoud Tunde Hassan. In this past few days, it's been more than a storm and a teacup for security management in the country, particularly funds appropriated and disbursed for arms procurement. Is the nation getting value for money? time and other resources put into especially realizing the goals of internal security. This concern came even, became even more forceful and focal following a recent reported comment on arms purchase by the National Security Advisor, retired Major General Babagana Mungono. The public space was livid with vocal reactions to perception that neither monies no arms could be accounted for. Although the NSC has since clarified that the reported comments were misquoted, he stoutly said he did not say both arms and money could not be found. Well, the NSC rebuttal did little to, to diffuse or douse public reactions spawned by the vexed issue of managing arms procurement meant to fortify the nation against breaches within and without. Rather, it raised further questions about the propriety of the NSA going public on such matter in the first place. It also drew flanks over the level of inbuilt mechanism to ensure transparency and accountability in the nation's arms purchase. How procedural such is. This is quite understandable given the worsening insecurity in the country occasioned by banditry, insurgency, abductions and general criminality that have undermined peace, order and development in Nigeria. Democracy in practice interrogates the public reactions and underlying issues arising from the nation's arms procurement. Are the arms deals dealing with the nation's security challenges? We'll be back to engage these issues. Stay with us. This is Liberty Democracy in Practice. This is Liberty Democracy in Practice.
You're welcome back. We'll start with this question. Is the nation getting value for the money, time, and other resources put into especially realizing the goals of internal security? That's going to be the thrust of our discussion against the background of a recent comment which has generated a lot of reaction in the public space by the uh, National Security Advisor, Major General uh, Bawagana Mongono, retired. I'm joined in the studio by someone who is ably placed to uh, give insight into the issues um, before us for discussion. I'm talking about uh, Dr. Sani Aliyu. He is the Director General, uh, Commandant General, rather, Commandant General of uh, the Neighborhood Enlightenment and Safety Organization, NATO. Uh, it's an organization that's uh, quite involved in anti-terrorism and anti-insurgency. By that placement as Commandant General of NATO, he is, of course, ably placed as a security expert. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Saini, for joining us. And we'll also be engaging with uh, Elder Emmanuel uh, Koro, who is a public affairs commentator. He'll be joining us uh, virtually via other phone. For now, let's start with you, uh, Dr. Aliu. The comment by the NSA. Although he has said he was misquoted, but the very fact that it generated a lot of reactions within the public space is enough to drive concern. Uh, what's what's your reading of that, th this this encounter? Well, as far as I'm uh, concerned, I think in the last program I had with you, I was, I was able to make my opinion very clear regarding the NSA. Wherein I asked uh, uh, the president, Muhammad Buhari, to relieve him of his duty to go back because of some certain lapses, lapses in meeting. First lapses, it shows the outcry during the late uh, Kari uh, Saga meeting mm -hmm. shown that he's not on top of the situation. Where he's complained that the service chiefs are not holding meeting with him, or rather they are holding meeting with late Kari, who was supposedly the chief, who was the chief of staff. And it beats my imagination. How can you have as, uh, an NSA? who is supposed to be the coordinator of national security, who all the security chiefs need to be meeting and giving him update of the security and security challenges that Nigeria is facing, who himself is supposed to have been able to coordinate internal cooperation within the services that we are lacking in Nigeria. Because what the Air Force is pursuing, the aims and objective of the Air Force, in the same fight of counter-terrorism, it's not the aim and objective of uh, the Nigerian uh, uh, army. They have, they have a contradictory purpose of doing what they are doing. So, uh, and as a, as a national security uh, advisor, he is supposed to, by all standards, make sure there is level, uh, good level playing ground and good cooperation between these services. But now, even at, at, that, at, at that time, I mean, the, yes, the NSA did complain about being kept, I mean, sidelined and in, in favor of the situation. Wasn't that the choice, the decision that would have been made only by the president? And it's his prerogative to so deal with anybody he chooses within his setup. No, the president has nothing to do with this. The president already has appointed in the national security advisor. And by, by, the, by, by the standard of his office, all the service chiefs supposed to be meeting with him as the coordinator of national security. Whereas there is insecurity in the nation, a heightened, a serious uh, security situation in the, in the country, mm -hmm. that he is supposed to be in charge. First, he's not even in charge of the, of the, of the, uh, of the security because he's, he has already uh, cried out that the service chiefs no longer meet with him. So this has already given us answer to his recent cry again, knowing fully well that he's not, he has never been in charge of the security situation in Nigeria, so he doesn't even know what the, the other services are doing in terms of arms procurement and the fight against uh, uh, insurgency or uh, uh, 
terrorism in the country. So now maybe this is now he's awakened from his slumber because of the change in guards, and so he may have a, a very good position now to muster a little of his muscle out to see as uh, to, to come on board. To now say, okay, I'm not NSA. I will really deal with the situation okay, I, based on the new commerce in the, in the, in the, in the service system so that now he can coordinate. He is switching to his responsibility. One. Secondly, maybe now that he's awake, he has seen, he has cited some irregularities in terms of arms purchase and uh, money disposed for those arms purchase. So if he has cited such irregularities, we are not, not expecting to come on public to say yes, I'm actually com yes, I'm coming to that. I mean, um, th the NSC has said he was misquoted. Um, he has said he's, he was misquoted. What did he say? Now, about, uh, the, uh, about uh, not being able to put, a, I mean, being able to track the money or the arms that were supposed to have been brought. Okay, um, actually, we're being joined by Elder Emmanuel Okoro. Um, Elder Okoro, uh, welcome to the program. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, let me just, before I go on with my line of questioning, let me find yeah. out what's, what's, your, what's your take about the recent comments made by the NSA about arms purchase in the country. And uh, although he has said he was misquoted, as a public affairs commentator and looking at issues around uh, within the public space, what's your position? My, my take really is that uh, this country, if we are into a severe security problem, and uh, the discussions around our country is what are the best methods of securing this nation? Because security means prosperity, security means peace, security means economic development. And for the defense uh, minister to recant his language, we were saying, let us be efficient and let us be. Uh, in terms of solving our security problem with the amount of money we have acquired so far, and then let us buy arms, appropriate arms that are a bit able for us to defeat these terrorist issues. It is not a good one to say, I'm sorry I didn't say it, or I said it. What he wants to, what Nigeria has want to do, the money we appropriate for defense uh, equipment, where have they gone? In which way have they been properly utilized? So the minister's statement, we are asking him, what do you think about the equipment we have purchased? Where are these equipment? How can a few number of terrorists begin to scare Nigerians? It's not, it's not, it's not fair to us. Nigeria is one of the largest countries in Africa, and the world recognizes our strength and parity. How can it be that bandits? Kidnappers and all sorts of men uh, of, 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 of evil character. They begin to scare Nigeria. It's our head up. It is not done. Okay, we we'll, we'll predict it's not done. And I'm saying the minister should know that we No, the NSA, not the minister. How the much minister. money have we programmed for defense? And how has this money been utilized? That defense is democracy, which means accountability. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, doctor, we're, 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 I'll, I'll still be coming back to you to look at uh, the level of transparency and accountability in arms procurement in this country. I'll, I'll be back to you shortly. Let me take the view of uh, Dr. Aliu, uh, uh, Commander General of NESO, who is here in the studio with us. Uh, doctor, um, whether or not uh, the NSA has clarified his position. What is the propriety, proprietary or otherwise of having come out in the first place? Is, can it be tied to the, the situation predating the appointment of the service chiefs when he said he was actually sidelined? Well, I think uh, what the NSA is trying to do, from my own opinion, is that uh, he wants to save his face now. He feels, okay, I've not been proactive earlier. Let me become proactive. Let me stand my foot on the ground. Let the country know that there is NAA in the country. Because as far as people like us are concerned, we don't know whether we have existing NSA. And that was why in the last program I called on President Muhammad Buhari to relieve this man's duty and bring somebody who is proactive. We are, we are for, good, for goodness sake, we are, we are 200, over 200 million people. 
You can't tell me that you only have one person that can do the job. You have so many people that can do the job. Within the Nigerian I retired uh, the generals, within the the civil service, retired civil service, within even the, the civil societies, you have people that can come and coordinate the national security without necessarily going through the, 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 the normal services. Countries, we have seen countries in the world that their NSA <coughs> national security uh, that hasn't got anything to do with, with, the, with the nation's uh, security services, and they perform pro, uh, very well. It's all about your capacity to coordinate and understand the, 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 the situation at each point in time and be able to predict and forecast the future. Because as a security, national security advisor, you must be able to tell me, line out what is going to happen in Nigeria, to, in, uh, what's going to happen in terms of security breaches in Nigeria for the next 20, 30 years. If you don't have those, that such capacity, there is no need for you to be an NSA. Because if we have a proper NSA in this country in the first place, this issue of Boko Haram would have arisen. Because we saw it coming. When, when, when Libya was falling, we saw it coming. People like us have already predicted that this is this, is, this situation. In 2001, in Muzin Center, I presented a paper. I was warning President Obasanjo that time that the way he's uh, glowing with uh, OPC, Obama People's Congress, if the North ordinary Northerner know that there can be patronage in terms of violence, he will go around in this country, in this country, Banding himself with bombs and exploding everywhere. This is a 2001. And it so happened in this country. So I do not understand why you should have an NSC who is supposed to look at the parameter of all the parameters around the country and what and the neighboring country and what is happening in the global space to be able to tell out activities to par, eh, to counter whatever uh, security, uh, situ uh, uh, security situation or whatever security situation. Uh, negativity will arise from time to time to be able to give us a, 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 a well a well coordinated direction and a well situated situation okay so now, but if you cannot achieve that then it means you do not know what you are doing there if you will be sitting on the table as nsa and then you'll be coming out to tell us that uh, there is loose, uh, there is um, uh, the chief of army uh, we did not do procurement uh, money money are missing or whatever no ma there is no smoke without fire. Whatever, how, how you want to dress the topic, whether he's denying it or not, it must have come out somewhere, if not from him directly, but from his office. It means there is carelessness in terms of national security uh, 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 coordination in Nigeria. Yeah, I mean, that's why we're raising the question of the proprietary of this issue coming into the public space in the first place. But beyond the immediate, I mean, looking at the general architecture for security in this country, is there sufficient transparency and accountability in, in the process? Well, if you look at the general situation in the country, the system as a whole, there is no transparency. The whole system, to forget about the security, whether, whether you are talking of the economic uh, situation of the country, whether you are talking of the, uh, that, that of, uh, uh, legislative situation of the country, whether you are talking about uh, the executive situation of the country, there is no transparency anywhere in Nigeria. And uh, I think uh, Buhari is challenged because he took it upon himself to fight corruption. And we saw it a little bit, but over the period, we, we have seen some derailment. And as I speak to you today, Nigeria is worse for it in terms of corruption. This is straight. Nigeria is my country. I have no any other country than Nigeria, and I'm a passionate Nigeria. I don't care whoever they ask God. I don't care about that. What I know is that there is no transparency in the whole Nigerian system. Forget about whether you are chief of army or whether you are a, a, a judicial somebody. No, there's no transparency. But do we have supervisors? Do we have people that can actually checkmate uh, uh, responsibilities given to people? For instance, the NSA, when you are giving money for, to buy arms and ammunition or weapons, as an NSA, you're supposed to know exactly how these orders were made when these orders uh, are coming, how it has been deployed, who is deploying who, is it taken to the Nigerian Navy, is it taken to the Nigerian Air Force, is it taken to the Nigerian Army, is it, having, is it the Nigerian police? You must have all those coordinations. Even though we are operating at the premise of impossible security networking in Nigeria, because Nigeria is uh, having over 200 million people, okay, in a space of about 923,000 
Uh, uh, excuse me, let me just. Uh, uh, Elder Okoro? Hello? Could you please bring down the volume of uh, your receiver? Hello? Can you hear me? Okay, uh, doctor, let me c uh, continue with you. I mean, in terms of where you are. You are so, uh, Nigeria is serving 923,000 square kilometer plus and uh, 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 with a citizen of about 200 million, million people. people. And then you have the total security population of Nigeria less than 1 million. Are we a serious country? Are we a serious country? How can less than 1 million total security uh, uh, personnel in Nigeria procure security for 200 million people in the space of 923,000 square kilometers? You're, you're, you're talking about the combined um, personnel driving security I'm in Nigeria, telling you, everything the together. Nigerian Army, the Nigerian Air Force, civil, all of them, all the services, including gang robbers. You know gang robbers? <laughs> we call them this, uh, this uh, uh, we, uh, correctional uh, staff, mm. correctional uh, the, the facilities staff or whatever. We call them prison staff before. In the north, we call them gang robbers, mm -hmm. including the gang robbers who are mainly not particularly participating in outer security but prison security. Put every of the, any uniform person put it together, Nigeria has less than one million. And with a population of over 200 million people living within the space of 923,000 square kilometers. We, we are not a serious country. The president should note, and everybody should note, that Nigerian security architecture has failed. And we should dress it up immediately. This is an urgent emergency. Otherwise, we are going to have a first state in Nigeria. Okay. We'll be looking at uh, how we can strengthen the security of this country, coming up with workable strategy, an effective architecture that will sustain and secure Nigeria and Nigerians. We'll be right back to continue our discussion. Uh, Dr. Sanya Liu, uh, Commander General Neso is here with us, and out there via the phone, uh, Elder Emmanuel Okoro uh, is still very much around. We'll continue our discussion Again, we ask the question. Oh. This is Liberty Democracy in Practice. This is Liberty Democracy in Practice.
Yeah, welcome back. Democracy in Practice, reaching you on the combined transmission of uh, Liberty TV and Liberty Radio. We're driving from Abuja and we're discussing the issue of uh, uh, appropriations, funds, disbursed for procurement of arms to secure Nigeria. Are we getting value for these appropriations? It doesn't matter how much, because there have been issues about how much has been voted for purchase of arms to secure Nigeria. That is not really the matter. The biggest measure of that amount and the merit of that amount is whether or not we're getting deal, the deal, the value for such arms procurement. And I'm in the studio with uh, Dr. Uh, Sania Liu, who is the Commandant General of NESO. Uh, neighborhood Enlightenment and Safety Organization. Uh, it's an organization that is involved in anti-terrorism and uh, anti-insurgency. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for sharing your time with us on the program. Thank you for and having me. Elder Emmanuel Okoro is also with us, uh, reaching us via the phone. Uh, yes, Doctor. Notwithstanding the amount of money that have been budgeted over time, for arms procurement, are we getting value for it? Well, uh, we cannot get value for what you don't have on ground. During President Jonathan, we had about the Dasuki Gate situation. Money for arms, we are redirected to other political uh, whatever. And this government came, they even incarcerated, uh, arrested uh, Dasuki, and then get him uh, get him get him get him incarcerated for some time before he was relieved now is this government making the same mistake that we said jonathan has made what improvement what is the difference between the allegation label against jonathan uh, uh, administration with this allegation that the nsa is labeling against his own system now well, you already said that. Whether, whether, that. whether he said it or he didn't say it, that is not the question because there, there's never smoke without fire. If he said it, fine. If he doesn't say it, it, it came out from somewhere around his office. It means there's carelessness in terms of procuring security, national security in Nigeria. So what we are saying is we already knew. Uh, if he's on top of the, the situation, before the before the expiring uh, experiment of the, uh, the, uh, the former me. service um, chiefs. Elder Okoro, I hope you're listening to us. Uh, Dr. Ali is making his uh, comment on whether or not we're getting fair deal for the amount of money that have been voted for. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you too. Yes, Dr. Ali here is making, uh, giving insight into whether or not we've gotten fair deal for the amount of money that have that have reportedly been voted and disbursed for arms purchase. He will continue his comment and then I'll come back to you as soon as... Uh, okay. yeah. Please just listen to what he's saying. So, Doctor. like I was saying, well, well, you, you wouldn't say you have value for what you, have, you don't have on ground. And if there is... A, if uh, if it's, they say there's no smoke without fire. Now, if from the office of the uh, National Security Advisor, or, the, or rather him or from this office, we are hearing complaints, that the chief, that the money meant to procure arms were neither seen nor the arms on ground. That completely confirms the the agitation of the Nigerian army on the field. These army boys that they are complaining that they, they, they don't see, they don't have equipment to, uh, to engage Boko Haram. And they brought, they, they sometimes ago, they, 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 they brought the expired, they, they gave the expired ammunition and expired uh, 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 arms to go and engage Boko Haram. And they, some of the machines, when they are firing them, they get hit up and, 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 and then hooked up. Some of the machines, when they are firing them, they, it got bust and, 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 and killed the person that is using them. All these allegations, we are there, we've seen them on, online. They have been making some trend, a lot of them, uh, a lot of, uh, some, some, some years back. And of course, we knew very well that the Nigerian Army Authority dealt with such people mm -hmm. and got martial some of them. Some of them even didn't make it alive. So we all know this, all these allegations are there. So what is the difference between Jonathan uh, administration and Buhari's administration? If Buhari should go and uh, uh, arrest the Suki, Colonel the former NSC, 
the and then the the, the hashtag uh, the Suchi Gate for for uh, for uh, for monument to ammunition am that we are divided. And now this current NSC is is coming out from his own office again that the arms the money that, that they didn't see any money that is the money that was meant for the purchase of arms were neither see nor the arms were seen uh, were, were on ground. So you see, the, 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 there's, I think I think the new EFCC boss should be given that leverage to go and look into these activities critically. Okay. Unless Buhari has stopped fighting corruption, then we, as the citizens of Nigeria, will continue watching them because it's just it just it just it, just, it doesn't make sense. Okay. Every day, children have been uh, kidnapped in schools. Every day, our girls' children in school are defied kidnapped and defied and messed up in this country and nobody is doing anything even when we hear that some governors are even having some complexity in it nobody is do doing anything nobody has uh, has accosted any governor no we have had a local government chairman in a trending uh, 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 voice discussion between him and the kidnapper and even mentioning this the, the, the governor of the state and that the, the government of the state and the person who brought, brought up that uh, allegation today, Mahdisha, who is being dealt with, broken neck and broken waist. We saw him trending on the video again. So, what kind of country are we running? And we said Nigerians have 101 percent confidence in President Muhammad Buhari that he's coming to turn around the good fortunes of Nigeria. Okay. But now we are, look at what we, are, what we are having. I don't understand. Okay. Um, um, Elder Oko? Yeah. Yes. I, I just. Sought to know from uh, Dr. Sanya Liu here. We've had so much money voted for arms purchase and general security in this country. Are we getting value for no, this let appropriation? Me, let me make this clear to you. Uh, Liberty TV has always made it clear to the whole Nigerian that we as a people, we want to know how we are governed the sense is how is one of the reasons because the government is to secure lives and property and the welfare of the people. We are going to hold our government responsible for that. We will not shrink in our responsibility. And we want to get the enough value. Go and look at the project since 2015 on defense. Go Google it. You see how much money has been spent on uh, defense. government said over and over uh, that the capacity of the bandits, the criminals, the insurgents, the terrorists, um, that the capacity has been degraded. Can we hold that as a true reflection of what's on ground? That's number one. Number two is, in terms of the procurement of arms, 
Are we talking number? Are we talking about sophistication? Are we talking about adequacy in terms of quality and caliber of what we are putting out there to confront the, the level of insecurity in this country? Thirdly, can we develop it? Can we look inward? We have security agencies. Uh, DICON is there. Nikon, Daikon is there, defense is, is, uh, to, to produce, even if it's light arms, can we look at that option? Well, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, reiterate it here directly that uh, uh, security situation in Nigeria is, uh, is, uh, is, it has come to a decayed level. Absolutely, the insecurity in this country is so high. Let's not deceive ourselves. Whether it is lack of ammunition, whether it's lack of arms, whether it's lack of population, the government need to wake up and we need to go for an emergency national security conference within the security nucleus. Hmm. Within the security nucleus, there must be a conference where we will face ourselves and tell ourselves the truth. Where we can even slap ourselves and fight ourselves for in for our inabilities for for some inadequate in, in, inadequacies uh, in terms of pro, pro, procurement and all these things, we need to look at it that way. And who is going to do this is National Security Advisor. Then we we'll look at the parameter of the country and how strategic, how strategically we can now network our security and reform it because there is, there is need for total reformation of Nigerian security system. We cannot have, be having 1960 security strategy in, in, the, in 2020. This is absurd. We cannot have the same kind of mentality in, since, since 1957 and you think it's going to work now. That's absurd. We must change our, we must change our outlook. We must look at what is in, 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 in the global change the globe, uh, in terms of technology, in terms of electronics, in terms of uh, uh, um, even uh, stra uh, strategic uh, attendance to uh, uh, emergencies, uh, when you are talking about uh, uh, camera, camera life mm -hmm. and all those, mm -hmm. and then other, other, other sensitive applications that you can be able to dictate where crime is about to happen and where crime is happening and how to counter these things before they happen. That is one. We must do that. Nigerian government is doing nothing now. I was celebrating Buhari. I've been celebrating Buhari for a very long time. But I'm telling President Mahmoud Buhari that his government is failing. And if anybody is telling him anything otherwise, otherwise then they are deceiving him. Because right now our children can no longer go to school. That is the truth. Primary school children have been stopped to go to school. So when you don't have the, when the children, uh, the, the, the country doesn't have a future, in his children, then tell me who are going to be the leaders of Nigeria tomorrow. So why do you need to wake up in his house and do something about it right away? I mean, then, we're, we're talking about this rejigging re the uh, uh, security arch architecture. I hope that, uh, Elder Okoro, you're listening to me. But we're talking about rejigging security architecture. Um, we're saying that the money already appropriated is not being fully right. accounted for. But whatever we do now, we'll need much more money being pumped into it. Can we give a guarantee that even if money is thrown at this situation, we will get results? Well, let me say this. The National Assembly, they've ordered this one, but there will be no uh, Friday now and fortnight in evaluating the way we spend all the money on the things. Because it is a shameful thing anywhere in the world that Africa's pride is being harassed by a few old and men. Now, that is not acceptable by any standard. That is why we are saying, yes, we are going to turn more money into the French. But let me let let be shown how clearly we have done. Uh, I give an example of Dr. Uh, Aziz Aliu, who was given money to do, deal with Nigeria's identity. International communities said that this man has shown evidence of a, a pro, 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 procreative engineer that has moved Nigeria forward, given the resources and committed from 2.3 million Nigerians registered, we now have 62 million Nigerians. That is the 
evidence of applying money scientifically to solve a problem. The same way in defense, we should be able to have a team of think tanks made in the defense industry. We should make us know how much money we should spend and they will account for the money we're giving them. That is how they get about it. It is not the best scope on the media and for us any figure. How do you spend the world we gave you? It's called accountability in democracy. Thank you very much. We're talking about, uh, well, please uh, stay on the line. Uh, we're talking about being accountable uh, and generating uh, the right results for all the efforts, for all the energies, for all the resources put into national defense, national security, especially security, securing the lives of Nigerians and giving them peace and order. Do you see other elements, other institutions of state waking up to this responsibility? The National Assembly, for instance. Well, as far as I'm concerned, like I keep saying, when you give responsibility to persons, you must have the monitoring. What, how, you, moni you must monitor, have the mon monitoring side of it, monitor what achievement, at what level, where, where we are, how we are going to get to, where we plan to get to, and all those. Coincidentally, I doubled mm. as uh, Commandant General of NESO, who is a counter, which is a counter-terrorism organization, and again, I'm a forensic expert. Yeah. I, I'm di a director intergovernmental Inst international institute for certified forensic professionals. Yeah. Uh, I'm in charge of the African intergovernmental. It's a global organization. We have offices in over 140 something countries. Yeah. Now, what we are saying, if the president wants us to help him. We can investigate the Nigerian Army, the Nigerian Navy, the Nigerian, all, all the services. We will bring out the facts and figures of how much they have given them and how much they have used to spend uh, in buying their, uh, whether they buy at all, whatever they procure, how they procure it, whatever was used, whatever was damaged, we can, we can, we can all get all those uh, 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 so statistics. So you are suggesting we we'll put up mechanism for a forensic uh, probe Exactly. Defense spending. Exactly. Defense spending must have forensic. Must. The president must look at it clearly so that we will not run another Jonathan mistake. Buhari doesn't want to go Jonathan mistake. Yes, Nigeria, we are supporting you. Buhari, we don't want you to go Jonathan mistake. We don't want another uh, 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 gate, mm -hmm. another new gate. <laughs> so what we are saying, we have experts in Nigeria. I, ISFIP is there. And it's close to him because the chairman of Africa of ISFIP is even staying in the villa. So he can only call him and give us that responsibility. Go and investigate all the money we are giving to this service, to the, 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 the defense. The army money, the, the air force, the navy will give us, the, uh, we will look at it and we will bring out facts and figures. Within a few months, we will be able to say whether the chief of army uh, uh, did the writing, whether the chief of Naval did the writing or any other person did the writing. We should be able to assist the government. That is why we are on ground. Even if you said uh, facts, facts are even born, documents are born, we will recreate the documents. We will if, go and board all the, uh, all, 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 the, all the invoices. We will recreate them. We have the capacity to recreate all those documents. We will recreate them. I will bring out facts for the government. So what we are saying is that Nigeria should be taking a very serious country. In fact, for any intent and purposes, Nigeria is supposed to be the leader of Africa. And everybody is seeing Nigeria. And look, Nigeria, God has given Nigeria every resources. We have human resources. We have, we have, we, we, we have all that it takes to make this country run. Even for, forget about the natural resources. Mm. Our human capacity is even tested and acknowledged by Americans in their country. So what can stop us to progress as a nation? We must keep our, uh, that, uh, that, that, that our ugly side behind us, our selfish interest to fill our pocket and our family, and then see how Nigeria can survive as a country. And we are telling President Mohamed Buhari, as an organization, we are giving him a voluntary, we are volunteering ourselves to his services. And we will look into all these critical areas and bring our facts. Is there sufficient political will to deal with this situation? Well, I think Buhari should have a sufficient political will if he's not surrounded by some suckers. 
<laughs> so if you understand what I'm saying, he should try to uh, root, uh, I mean, remove the suckers around him and let him have straight man and deliver Nigeria. Because we want Buhari to go back to Dora with a name. He came, it was because of his, his name, his integrity, and his, uh, uh, his, his fortrightness that actually deliver him as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And we don't wish him to go back to Dora without a name. So what we are saying is that he, President Mahmoud Buhari, should leave, should keep aside his relations with any other person. Nigeria is his relation. Nigeria is his family. His immediate family should not be put, brought into national, I mean, uh, governance. All those people that are surrounding him, let him weed them off. And let them be people that are passionate Nigerians that will assist, assist him to succeed in this country. We must assist uh, President Mahmoud Buhari to succeed. Because if Buhari leaves today, Nigeria is in India is in India in, in, in great danger because we don't know who is coming to be sincere about fighting corruption again. Mm. So we must uh, use what we have to get to get to where we want to go. Buhari has us on ground. Uh, we are we are we are in Nigeria, even though we have global uh, we, are, we are in the whole global space. We can bring our members from across the country across the globe to come and deliver Nigeria these services. Our headquarters is in America, and we are over 140 countries. We can right. bring all these expertise together for the purpose of the success of this country to deliver Nigeria. Right. We need to get Nigeria secured. We need to provide a level of confidence for Nigerians as we handle internal security matters. And arms procurement is a key element in this whole uh, process. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sanya Liu, uh, Commandant General. Uh, Neighborhood Enlightenment and Safety Organization, NESO. Um, we do appreciate your input right into uh, this emerging issue. It's a developing issue, actually. And uh, Mr. Okoro, uh, Elder Emmanuel Okoro, thank you also for reaching us uh, via the phone. We do appreciate this. Hoping that uh, we all continue to put our head, hands on deck to drive Nigeria to where it needs to be democratically. Thank you very much. For joining us. This is Liberty Democracy in Practice.